In the last video, we introduced the data association variable theta, and we used that to express the measurement model as a product of two simpler distributions, with the disadvantage that we need to sum that product over all possible data associations theta. In this video, we will study the expression for the simpler distributions and use that to find a suitable expression for the measurement model. Our first objective is to find a simple expression for the joint distribution of the measurement matrix Z, the number of measurements M, and the hypothesis theta, given X. We think this is manageable, since this distribution can be factorized into two simpler distributions, namely the distribution of Z given M, theta, and X, times the distribution of theta and m given x. Note that once we have found an expression for these distributions, we obtain the measurement model by summing over theta. Now, the expressions for these two factors take different form depending on theta and m. The first possibility is that theta is equal to zero and that we have observed m detections. This event tells us that the object is undetected and that all m detections are cluttered. The second possibility is that theta takes some value i greater than zero, and that we have observed m detections, where m needs to be at least one, since the object is detected. This joint event actually tells us three things. First, that the object is detected, since theta is greater than zero. Second, that we have m minus one clutter detections, since one of the measurements is an object detection. And finally, that the object detection is given index i. We will now present the expressions for these distributions in these two different cases. Let us start with the case where the object is undetected and all measurements are clutter detections. In this case, the vectors in Z are all clutter measurements and the distribution over Z is just a product over FC of ZI since the clutter measurements are independent and all have the spatial distribution FC. The prior probability of theta and m given x is simply 1 minus pd, representing the probability that theta is equal to 0, times the probability of getting m clutter detections, which is the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda bar c evaluated at m. Taking the product of these two factors gives us an expression for the joint distribution of z, m, and theta given x, which is precisely what we were looking for. Still, to simplify things for us later on, we will express this distribution on a slightly different form by plugging in the expressions for the Poisson distribution and Fc. The expression for this Poisson distribution is e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda bar c to the power of m divided by m factorial. And the expression for the spatial distribution of the clutter detections, Fc, is lambda c of z divided by lambda bar c. Using these expressions, we can write the distribution of z, m, and theta given x on this form. Now, this may look more complicated than what we had before, but at least we can see that the factors lambda bar c that I've marked in blue appear in two places and actually cancel out. This gives us the following final expression for the distribution of z, m, and theta given x. The final expression may also look complicated, but you can recognize the first factor, 1 minus pd, as the probability that the object was not detected, and the remaining factors as the distribution of the clutter detections evaluated for the matrix CK being ZK. Let us now look at the second case, which is when theta takes some number between 1 and m, which means that the vector with index theta is an object measurement, whereas the, all the other measurements in Z are clutter measurements. In this case, the distribution of z given m, theta, and x can be written as the following product. First, the distribution of column number theta, that is, the vector z theta, which is the object measurement, is gk of z theta given x. Second, we have the distribution over all clutter measurements, which is the product over fc of zi for all i except i equal theta, since that is an object measurement. An alternative way to express this product is as a product over all i and then divide by the factor that should not be included in the product, which is fc of z theta. For instance, if we have two measurements and theta is equal to 2, such that the second measurement is an object measurement, then the distribution over z, 
given m theta and x is gk of z2 given x, since z2 is the object measurement, times fc of z1, since z1 is a clutter measurement. Here we can express fc of z1 as the product of fc of z1 and fc of z2 divided by fc of z2, since fc of z2 will cancel out. We note that fc of z1 times fc of z2 is the product over i from 1 to m of fc of zi, whereas the denominator is fc of z theta, which means that the expression obtained in this example matches the general expression. The prior probability of theta and m given x now contains three factors corresponding to the three pieces of information that they convey. First, that the object is detected, which happens with probability pd. Second, that we have precisely m minus one clutter detections, since we have m measurements in total, among which one is an object detection. This happens with probability Poisson of m minus one, where the Poisson distribution has parameter lambda bar c. Finally, theta does not only indicate that the object is detected, but it also specifies which measurement is the object measurement. Since the measurements are randomly ordered, every possible value between one and m is equally likely before observing z, which means that they all have probability one over m, given the value of m and that the object is detected. For those interested, we provide a detailed derivation of this result on the homepage and in the book. Given these equations, we obtain the expression that we are looking for by taking their product. As in the previous case, we can try to simplify the expression by using the detailed expressions for the Poisson distribution and the spatial distribution of the clutter. This Poisson distribution, evaluated for m minus 1, is e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda bar c to the power of m minus 1 divided by m minus 1 factorial. And as before, the spatial distribution is lambda c of z divided by lambda bar c. As in the previous case, plugging in the detailed expressions seem to give us a more complicated expression, but at least the lambda bar c factors marked in blue cancel out. We arrive at the following expression. Again, this may look complicated, but you can at least recognize pd of x times gk of z theta given x as a single object measurement model evaluated for the matrix OK being the vector z theta. Except for a factor 1 over m, all the remaining factors correspond to the distribution for the clutter matrix zk being the matrix zk without the column vector z theta. Some of you may find this intuitive, but if you don't, it is also perfectly fine to simply view this as a step towards obtaining a model that you can use for filtering. Either way, we will return to the measurement model once we have introduced theory about random finite sets. And I think that theory may help you to understand the expressions that we have derived here. From my perspective, what you have seen on the past two slides is the most complicated part of this week's material. Having completed that, we now have an expression for the distribution of z, m, and theta given x, which means that we can finally express the measurement likelihood p of z given x, needed in the update steps. To obtain that likelihood, we sum the distribution of z, m, and theta given x over theta from 0 to m. Here is the term for theta equals 0, and here are all the terms where theta takes values from 1 to m. In other words, this is the term where the object is undetected, and here are all the hypotheses where the object is detected. Because of how we express these terms, they all share some factors, namely e to the power of minus lambda bar c and the product over fc of zi. This means that these factors can be extracted out from all terms, and we are left with these terms inside the parentheses. You can also note that the factors that are shared among all terms do not depend on the state x, and this means that they can be ignored later on when we use the likelihood function in the update step. We have now finally derived a complete expression for the measurement likelihood, which is the expression to the right here. For completeness, I've also mentioned that the expression we are looking at is the sum over 
theta of the distribution of z m and theta given x, since this makes it easier to understand the upcoming visualizations. To gain intuition, let us visualize this likelihood function in three examples that only differ in the value of the probability of detection, pd. As a starting point, we use an example where we have a scalar state and the object is detected with probability 0.85. If detected, we receive an object measurement, which is the object state plus some Gaussian noise. The cluttered intensity is 0.3 within the area of interest and zero farther away. Finally, we assume that we have observed one measurement at minus 1.6 and one at one. Since there are two measurements, we have three hypotheses corresponding to theta equals zero, which means that the object is undetected, theta equal one, which means that Z1 is the object detection, and theta equal two, which means that Z2 is the object detection. The likelihood function therefore contains three terms. First, we have the term where theta is equal to zero, which is the blue curve marked with circles. This term is one minus PD of X times e to the power of minus lambda bar c times the product of all the lambda c of zi factors. Since pd of x is a constant, this entire term is constant as a function of x, which is also seen in the figure. Then we have the term where theta is equal to 1, which is this green and point dashed curve. This term is pd of x times gk divided by lambda c evaluated at z1 equal minus 1.6 times the factors that all terms share. For theta equal 1, as a function of x, this gk function is large when x is close to z1, that is, when x is close to minus 1.6. This also matches the shape of the green and point dashed curve. Similarly, for theta equal 2, we obtain a third term for which gk divided by lambda c is instead evaluated at z2 equal 1. This gives us a term that takes large values when x is close to 1, as illustrated by the magenta-colored dashed curve. Adding these three terms together gives us the complete likelihood, illustrated by the black curve. You can start to imagine what may happen when you use this likelihood function in a measurement update. Clearly, the likelihood indicates that the object might be in this region, close to the measurements. But compared to a Gaussian likelihood function, this likelihood function does not vanish as we move away from the detections. In the second example, we have simply increased the probability of detection to 0.95. The main difference is that 1 minus PD is reduced to 0.05, which means that the term where theta is equal to 0 becomes much smaller. Finally, in the third example, we look at the likelihood function when we decrease the probability of detection to 0.5. The factor 1 minus PD is then increased to 0.5, which is 10 times larger than in the second example. And the term where theta is equal to 0 is therefore 10 times larger. If you look at the complete likelihood function, which is the solid black curve, you can see that the likelihood function is much less informative in this example since most values of x explain the measurements fairly well. The fact that the measurements are less informative is perhaps not surprising considering that we only have a 50% probability of detecting the object.